You ready? Here it comes. Read it with me. It'll be up on the screens. He says, but I tell you who hear me. Read it with me. Love your enemies. Now, who are our enemies? Let's discuss that quickly. Our enemies are obviously, as we've already talked about, people who don't like us. People who just are dissatisfied with us. Uh, they, they have something against us. It could be uh, from a distance as far as, you know, political differences or, or worldview differences, and they just come against us as a, as a general population or people as Christians. Or it could be someone in your life that you've just, you know, whether you meant to or not, ticked off, and they just don't like you anymore. Uh, enemies can be from way back. Maybe it started when we were kids and we're, we're still enemies to this day. Or it can be like I did the other day. I was in a parking lot. Wasn't really paying attention. I confess, I'm not a perfect driver. There it was. Did everybody hear that confession? And I was coming around a corner in this parking lot. I looked this way, but not this way, and I pulled right out in front of this guy. Totally did it. He almost hit me. Probably should have, but he locked him up. Ha- you know, it's, it's Friday afternoon, hammers the horn, and uh, he's obviously disappointed me. We drive a little bit further. I pull up to the spot where I was actually going in the parking lot. He pulls up right next to me. Windows down. Now, my son, my 14-year-old son was bent with me, so I think he kind of laid off the gas a little bit, so to speak. But he, uh, he proceeded to just let me know how, how he really felt about me. <laughs> and you guys, I, just, I stood there, and I was like, you're right. Oh, I am all those things. I'm an idiot. I really am. I, sh- I, sh- I didn't see you. He's like, yeah, you didn't see me. I was like, no, I agree. But we're agreeing. Yes, I didn't see you. And, and uh, you know, um, I, d- I didn't know how to placate the situation. The guy was so worked up. I mean, uh, and after a while, isn't it funny how our flesh starts kicking in? He starts telling me how bad of a driver. I'm like, hey, wait, hey, wait a minute. I'm not that bad a driver. I had a bad second there, but I'm not a bad driver, you know. But I fought all that back, and I just said, hey, you're right, you're right, I'm sorry. How can I make it up to you? Do you want a hug? You know, I didn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> but I felt like saying, I felt so bad that I had, I had, you know, this guy was visibly shaken, and I had ruined his day. And he, you know, slammed it in reverse, peeled out of there. And I'm sure, you know, if he sees me again at Publix or something like that, he's going to look at me like, I hate that guy. He's an idiot. Yeah, it, it, it can happen just like that, right? The sin nature kicks in, and you, you form an opinion of somebody, and that is your enemy. Yeah. It's anybody that, uh, you know, has disgust with you or hates you. That's, that's your enemy. But let me, let me uh, open the door a little bit wider here. Did you know that we can create our own enemies? Enemies aren't just people who hate us. Enemies are those that we hate. Wrestle with that for a second. Yeah, did you know that you can form false, uh, sinful opinions of people and make them your enemies? Yeah, there was this guy, I remember uh, in college, there was this kid, he came in, he was from California, he wore surfer board shorts before it was even cool to, but he was just, he was the whole package. Girls loved him, I was jealous of him. Sometimes jealousy breeds hate. Uh, But I I just, remember looking at this kid and I just wanted to punch him. Did anybody ever, ever, is is anybody in your life that you just want to punch? You know, you know who I'm talking about? They haven't done anything to you, haven't said anything about you, they haven't like cut you off in traffic like I did to this guy, but you just don't like them. And that, that's your sin. Own it. But that person has become your enemy, not because of anything they did, but because of something weird and warped in your heart. And what the Bible's going to tell us here is that you need to love those people. Those who come against you are visibly and audibly, you know, not your friends. And then it's those that you, for whatever reason, have just chosen not to like. You've got to love those people. Let's see what Jesus means. What do we do when people come, come against us? Jesus says to love them. Well, what does it look like to love a hater? How do you love someone that hates you? And Jesus is going to explain that to us in the second part of the verse. He says, love them in action, in word, and in prayer. Look what he says. He says, I tell you, hear me, love your enemies. And then he gives three phrases. Do good, poimeo kalos in the Greek, to those who hate you. Bless, eulageo, and we'll get to that in a second, to those who curse you, and pray, prosukamai, for those who mistreat you. Now, three things. If you're going to love somebody, you've got to whip into action. Everybody understand this about the Christian faith. The Christian faith is not played out, lived out, sitting on your can. The Christian faith is an active faith. It's, something that, it's not just something that we agree with mentally and it rearranges our thinking. It's something that changes our actions. And so what what the, Jesus is saying here to his followers, and he's saying to us, is that if you're going to love your enemies, you've got to go out there and be active in loving them. The, the first thing he says is do kind things for them. Do things for them that you would not normally be expected to do because they are your enemy. If you have that enemy at work 
that undermines you all the time. Uh, you know, do things for them at work that would help them in, improve in their job performance. Uh, if, if you have that mother-in-law who just pick, pick, picks at you and how you clean your house, ladies, uh, clean your house and then offer to clean her house. Or, Wow, that's weird. Uh, but that's, that'd be the kind of stuff. That, I mean, it even sounded weird coming out of my head. But those are the kinds of things that Jesus was saying. Go and, and make a way. Do something to love those people that don't love you. Actively seek ways that you can accomplish that. Uh, you know, it's, it's remarkable to me that even the people that we love the most can become, uh, uh, you know, uh, temporary enemies. Has anybody ever been in a fight with your husband or wife where you became enemies? Just for a second. Is there anybody out there not lying? All right. Yeah, well, uh, you know what it is. You draw up the battle lines. She's on that side. You're on that side, fellas, and you have your disagreement. And in those moments, you love each other. Big canopy up here. But in that moment, you're just not digging each other at all. And so you, you, you come against each other. And here's what, here's what happens in my uh, fights with my wife, Eleanor. Uh, if I'm having a good day, and I pray, God, uh, that you give me good days when these things happen. Uh, if we, like, uh, have a fight early in the morning, it's a disagreement. Uh, we have to run off to work, get the kids to school. All, all, like, life doesn't, like, neatly fit into a fights, do they? I mean, life happens at this rapid pace, and a lot of times you have to push pause. And, and then there's that weird whole, are we okay thing, right? And so on those days, here's what I do. I head to Publix. It's right over here. I drive down to where Eleanor's working at Echo, and I drop the, I drop the flowers. And I'm like, here's the flowers. <laughs> Here are the flowers. I don't, I don't know if, if I was right or if you were wrong. It doesn't matter. We're not right. <laughs> Did I say it that way? That was Freudian. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was Freudian. That was, that was, that was su subliminal. You know what I mean, though. Anyway, uh, if I'm loving my wife in those situations, even in the midst of a disagreement, I actively go and do something to, to prove to her the canopy of love is still there, even though the, the hate kind of reigns in this one situation. Are you with me? That, that, that's how you love someone who is either temporarily or eternally <laughs> your enemy. You do things for them. How about this one? You, you, you say good things about them. You speak well of them. That Greek word there when it says, bless those who curse you, it's if people uh, in their conversations are saying every uh, you know, horrible thing that they can say about you, you in turn give them a blessing. The Greek word there is eulogeo, and it's from where we get the word eulogy at a funeral. If you give a eulogy at a funeral, you stand up and you say all these great things about the person who's been deceased. And uh, what you need to do in your relationships with your enemies is eulogize them. Now, you don't get to kill them first, <laughs> but you get to speak blessing over them when they don't speak blessing over you. You know, everybody's had this situation. I mean, it's what middle school is all about. If you're in middle school, that's all kids do. It's like a sport on the playground. You know, let's, let's cut each other down and talk poorly. And, and if you're in middle school right now, here's what I want to tell you. If you come back and you hear the news that so-and-so is saying this about you, you don't get to concoct or come up with their, you know, worst wart or their, you know, biggest blight. You get to say, I love that guy. I love that girl. I don't know why she'd say that stuff about me. I think she's great. You get to speak those things. In fact, one of the authors I was reading about uh, uh, as I was preparing for this talk says that whenever you think of, a, of an enemy or whenever a situation comes up where you've heard that an enemy has spoken poorly of you, you should actually audibly kick your brain into gear and try to say at least one thing good about that person. Because what it does, it's like a calibration. If you've ever had your alignment checked and the thing gets out of whack, you've got to bring it back into square. And when you say things and you think things and they become words uh, of positive nature about that person, of love about that person, then it's like your alignment getting shifted back and you don't go off the path into hate. You speak blessing over those people. You love them with your words. Some of us, you know, we love people to their face and we hate them with our words. When they're out of the room, we crucify them. But when they're all up in, you know, in, in the space with us, hey, you're great, hey. But when the boss walks out, that guy is the biggest dork ever. We do it. Do you do it? I, I've done it. That's not love, Christian.